Hey now, welcome to Lone Star Mini Restoration. Uh, my last episode was a bit, it was done haphazardly, so I have to revisit it because I found some things and uh, learned some things and received a few tips. And uh, this episode is primarily to show how the floor panel is attached to the car, um, along with things that I need to remove. So right off the bat, uh, the floor panel attaches to the heel board back here. I've cleaned up all the dirt and grime, and the camera may, you may be able to pick up all the spot welds in here all the way around the perimeter. The, the heel board has a flange on it, and the, uh, a bottom flange, and the, and the uh, floorboard sits on top of that, and they're welded together. I'll rotate the car around to show the, the, the sides and how it's welded, but there's also... My, my Heritage floor panel didn't come with the cross beam, so I had to take out the cross beam. And the cross beam, and I haven't taken all of these welds out, but you can see them here. The cross beam is, is well, has a flange on the front and back sides of it. And you can see the spot welds here, where I've cleaned this section off. Here, along this side, and here. And it goes all the way up, and of course it goes up here. I've got to clean this off. But, so there's spot welds here that I have to remove, spot welds here that I have to remove. Um, the bench has a vertical support. It's supported right here. Now, um, I haven't cleaned this up to see if there's a spot weld there yet, but there's definitely a stud here. Um, and I'm thinking that, that maybe that vertical support had a stud on it, and it goes through these holes. There's a hole over here on the tunnel, and maybe it goes through that hole as a, and it's kind of as a, an alignment pin. So I'll be taking that off. I'll be taking the seatbelt um, strap off. I've measured, too, 16.4 uh, inches from the center of this hole to the heel board, um, just as a reference point. If I can salvage this, I will. If not, I'll buy another one. But I need to know where it's at. So I measured from here to there. Um, so that's, then there's also uh, a little bit of seam spot welding here. This is for the brake bracket uh, that goes uh, right just back of the uh, cross beam. And I'll show that when I rotate the car around. But so there's that weld as well. And then over here along the front of the, the uh, floorboard, it's welded all the way down the front, kind of like the heel board. But in here where the tunnel is, it's got a field of uh, spot welds. And you can see them all, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, there's, my gosh, there's 20 plus spot welds right here. So, so I'm gonna, I've cleaned that up, I'll clean those out. Now this area here, um, and this area down here is too far gone. I can't find spot welds to save my life. So odds are I'll, be, I'll just have to cut that out and then clean that up. Um, but I'll bring you in a closer look to this. This, this shot may be able to show you the, the field of spot welds just within the tunnel. Um, the tow board or this, this firewall uh, mounts to the floor panel and the, and the tunnel on the floor panel. Um, spot welds everywhere. Even along here, there's a whole bunch of them um, along, along the vertical here. So now let me rotate the car over real quick. All right, so in here, uh, the floor panel comes in, and this lip right here is the top of the inner sill of the floor panel. Uh, this lip gets spot welded to the doorstep that basically, it's a step. It, one, two, three steps, and it has a top lip, and they get welded like this all along this way. Um, and then the doorstep also gets welded. It kind of creates a box, if you will, a box structure. And I have a, a breakdown that will show this. But the doorstep also gets welded to this horizontal flange, which goes to the outer sill. So all along this sill, it gets welded, you know, this way. Um, but inside, here's, I'll bring the camera in closer. Inside, you can see the cross beam, and I've marked dimensions. I don't know if there's bars in the way, but I've marked inches because I need because I'm going to try to salvage it. I've marked dimensions from the back face of this cross beam to the heel board, and I'm getting 32 inches, and it's exact on both sides. So that was a good measurement, I think. But the cross beam has two flanges, one on the front, one on the back, and they get spot welded down to the floor panel, um, all the way from left hand side to right hand side. Um, there's also flanges here where the, flan where the cross beam meets up with the inner sill and there's spot welds here, you know, on these flanges, on the vertical flange and on the back flange. Now these are the brackets that I'm going to try to salvage um, and I'll try to take those off and, you know, I'm sure there's spot welds there that I can clean up. Now one tidbit that I'm going to do is I am going to uh, try to remove, 
remove this cross beam from the bottom side so that I can salvage these flanges as much as possible. That way I'm taking out material in the, in the old floor panel and not the cross beam. So one other thing that I'm trying to show here, this, I cleaned out the center of the bench from one side to the other. And this is where the heel board um, is welded on the top side of it. So you can see the spot welds that I cleaned up. So this I have no choice because I can't, I can't access it from the bottom side underneath the bench. So this one I have no choice but to try to remove these spot welds from the top side. So I will do that there. Um, other, other places that I believe is welded to the floor is, are the companion bins along this seam. I'm not sure. I've got to grind this away to, so that I can see them. Um, because my companion bins are so far gone um, on the inside, I thought there would be a lip of the companion bin that gets welded, you know, to the floor this way or, you know, from the bottom up maybe. But it's too far gone and there, if there was a flange, it's not there anymore. So, but I believe that the bag bins get welded to the floor here. Um, so that's another location I'll be looking at to remove. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, the other thing that I've redone is Charlie Spann, who is a neighbor of mine that I have yet to meet, um, but will hopefully soon, um, pointed out a, a, a slight but critical error that I made. I was measuring, you know, basically from I, I, earlier in my last video, I measured down to the seal and I marked the dimensions. However, um, I am going to redo that. I'm measuring now to the top of the seal. I got to figure out whether I measure here properly or the top of the step. I've got to remove this guy. Um, maybe I measure to this guy or this because this is where the door sits. Um, I'll have to look at the door construction, but instead of measuring to this flange, I'm going to be measuring to one of these flanges. Um, so I will do that. Thank you, Charlie Spann, for that tidbit. Let's see. Another tidbit that I was given, and I think it's a, a rather smart one, was to leave the vertical support on the bench, leave it in, because it basically serves as a datum point when you put, when you fit the new floor panel up, it gives you a, a datum point, a stopping point, and I, I, I'm going to definitely take advantage of that one. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pete. Thank you for that one. So I went back and I revisited all of my dimensions. Um, I mentioned, I dimensioned, uh, I did a lot more thorough dimensioning. Not only did I take dimensions up here on the A post, you know, from left A post to right A post, top and bottom, um, but I also went back and I measured from doorstep to doorstep. So as I've done here, um, is the camera picking that up? I, I think so. Uh, so I've done a front, back, a front, middle, and back, and actually it's all coming out pretty, pretty close, 50.2 inches. Um, you know, from doorstep to doorstep. Um, I will also be taking some other dimensions as I go along, uh, but I've gotten vertical dimensions here. I've gotten horizontal dimensions. I've locate, I've taken dimensions from the box beam to the heel board because the front of my car, I have no true datum and it's all messed up. So I've done the next best thing that I could do. And I've also dimensioned where these brackets are here. Um, I think I'm about set. So now I'll show you a little model. I had to figure out how the panels inside the companion bin uh, mesh together. Um, so I created a little model just to clear up my confusion. I've also had help from, my gosh, quite a few people send me messages and said, hey, you know, this is what's going on. And they'd send me a picture. Um, I know um, uh, William Murphy, uh, was wonderfully helpful with that and Kevin Richardson with uh, gentleman motor gentleman's motor racing team uh, He was fabulous. He did showed me a little video that he sent me um, Hands with hand sketches all that is fantastic Pete sent me pictures from his restoration is now a beautiful car um, so I have a thorough uh, can I say thorough? I have a very clear understanding of what happens back here. In fact, so much so that I built a model just to maybe help somebody else um, because it now makes sense to me. So in order to help me thoroughly understand, I created a little model of how the assembly of the floor panel and the various components go together. There's not really that many components. 
Um, but so if you were to take a cross section right through this area here, um, this is what you'll see. First, you have your floor panel, right? Part of your floor panel is your inner sill. It comes up as like a vertical wall um, that your cross beam goes from left to right. Then outside of that, you have your outer sill. Your outer sill gets spot welded to the inner sill through this flange right here. Um, and then you've got on top of your, your outer sill and in between your inner sill, you've got your doorstep here. Your doorstep and your outer sill get welded together here. And your doorstep and the inner sill get welded together here. Then on the back side, uh, within the companion bin, you've got what they call a uh, battery cable channel. And this isn't a very good view of it, but it slides in uh, just under the doorstep. And I'll show this other cross section shows kind of the location, but it slides in right here. It has a flange on the back side of this behind the doorstep that goes up just like this doorstep and it also gets welded to the inner sill right here. So that's essentially the cross section of what you're seeing around the doorstep area. Got a great tip from a couple people, Dave was one of them, um, on, you know, it's probably a good idea to check fit the door to see, you know, since the shell has been on the rotisserie, um, check fit the door just to make sure it works. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to tell you a little story that I heard from my daughter. Um, so about scorpions and tarantulas. Uh, so they went to spring, they went to swim in beautiful spring water, but also saw a bunch of the, kind of the deserty type, you know, mountain terrain. Um, and while they were there at night, they went scorpion hunting. So anyhow, I'm going to fit the door, or at least attempt to see what the gapping's like, and I'm going to tell a story. All right, Debbie, you have to help me hold this. Oh, do you, have to be in the video? you have to help me hold this. While I'm doing this, I'll tell you the story. Debbie, they went to... Okay, one minute. Okay, let's go in. All right. So, the story is they go out and... Uh, let's see, something's not right. They would go out and uh, looking for scorpions, and with a normal flashlight, um, you don't see anything. All you see is rocks. But they had special lights. They were kind of a purple bluish color. And when they turned the lights on, then the scorpions would show up as fluorescent green or yellow, and they could see them. And so it was kind of cool. All right, this just needs to go up. Um, I don't really know. Whoa, hello, there she is. Those two are in, those two are in, look at that. Here's the door and uh, look, you see, I don't know if the camera's picking this, but you see all my markings up there. But the door seems to have, down here, it's pretty consistent fit. I would call that, I mean, right here opens up just a little. It stays consistent from here to here. And then it closes down just a little, it's about a, quarter inch gap all the way around then down here it gets a little tight down here it's tight um, I can't tell here because the panel's gone this gap here is fairly large right here um, but all the way around over here it's pretty consistent I think it's a pretty good fit um, so uh, good advice thank you Dave and um, and I think there's another person that recommended that I fit the doors. Pete uh, Raymond, thank you. Um, so actually, I think it's a good job. So I'm gonna call that a success. So far, this jig, I think the effort that it's taken me to get the jig right and adding the center bar. Um, now, you know, I was so frustrated because I took the shell on and off two dozen times and I was, I was literally frustrated with it. Uh, but now I'm very pleased. I'm very, very pleased that it's done right. Um, so yeah, good job. I think this is good. So I'm going to take this off and then look at a few other things. Okay, so I just confirmed another slight 
concern, if you will, and that I was a little worried that, you know, I, I, I braced everything on the shell when it was um, at a rest rested state. It was not torqued in any way, went on the rotisserie. It was sitting on basically on the ground or on a pallet. And so, but I was still a little concerned. I thought, well, I wonder what's going to happen when I unbolt this and put it, I wonder if it's going to go back or if there's going to be a little bit of tension somewhere. And to my wonderful surprise, um, all these bolts, oh, here's, I'm missing one. All of these bolts fell beautifully in line. Um, no, look at that. No tension. I didn't have to pull them one way or the other. So essentially what that tells me, um, it tells me two things, and I'm pleased. One of the things is that the holes that I drilled were straight. I actually did a good job. You know, for the new guy, right? New guy working with metal. That's fantastic. Um, anyhow, and then the second thing is, truly, there's no um, no pulling or binding. I'm, I'm not pulling the shell one way or the other. Um, I think it's still in a fairly relaxed state. It's just braced wonderfully well. Now, with that, I will have to say that I am, again, I am also very pleased that I went this bolted route. Everything I've seen has been welded. And of course, I didn't have the capability of welding at the time. So I had to be different, come up with something different. And so far, I can't even screw on a, 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 a nut. Um, so far, uh, oh, it's wonderful. The fact that I can take this off and um, put it back to, together when needed is fabulous. I don't have to worry about, uh, oh, I'm loosening it. I, I'm a dumb. I, I, sometimes I wonder about myself. Dad, damn it. Um, no wonder it came off. Um, yeah, there you go. So I'm very pleased. This bad boy is uh, removable. Um, I really... Again, I, I'm, I'm pleased. I, I'm just, I'm tickled pink. It, that's how what you say in my household, you're tickled pink. Anyhow, I wanted to say that. I'll finish tightening these bolts down before I move on. So, um, ain't it great? So, my next step is, I think, to start removing um, spot welts. So, that might be my next video. Um, if I can't get my IMM video. So for now, um, everybody, thanks for watching. Thank you for the tips. Uh, I'm enjoying the journey. It's fabulous. Um, I'm sure there'll be a day where I'll be like, you know, I'm not enjoying the journey at this point. Uh, I don't know, maybe. You gotta take the good with the bad, right? I'm just hoping that I don't do a major mistake. I mean, I expect challenges. I just hope that I don't do anything major. But I'm gonna go inside because I wanna hear my daughter's stories of her camping trip. Uh, I want to ask her if the tarantula jumped at her or, you know, how many, all that stuff. You know, they went, they went swimming in crystal clear water, uh, wonderfully cold, which is fabulous for Texas. They went hiking. Uh, they did quite a bit. Um, so she had a good, a wonderful weekend. Uh, and I want to go hear the story. So, uh, again, thank you for watching. And uh, bye just now from Texas. Oh, here's alive with the sound of music.